All right, so it is day two of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Japan. The focus of the visit is, of course, the quadrilateral security dialogue. And this, of course, is the Quad Summit. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is attending the Quadrilateral Summit along with the American President Joe Biden, the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and also the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. After the summit concludes, the Indian leader will also hold three separate bilateral meetings today. The first bilateral is to be held with the American President Joe Biden. The Indian Prime Minister will also be meeting with the Australian Prime Minister for a round of crucial talks. In the second half of the day, the Indian leader will meet with the Prime Minister of the host nation, the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. In the meeting with the US President Joe Biden, the leaders are expected to review the India-US strategic partnership. The Indian Prime Minister will also discuss the further consolidation of India's multifaceted relationship with the United States. The two leaders will also continue their dialogue on regional developments and contemporary global issues. The U.S.-India talks will not just be limited to the bilateral agenda, but will also include issues of regional and global importance. Therefore, Joe Biden and the Indian Prime Minister are expected to discuss the war in Ukraine. The Indian Prime Minister will also have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the newly elected Australian Prime Minister later in the afternoon, Anthony Albanese. In a pre-departure statement, the Indian Prime Minister had mentioned the comprehensive strategic partnership between India and Australia. At the bilateral meeting, the multifaceted cooperation between India and Australia will be discussed, along with regional and global issues of mutual interest. Later in the day today is the last bilateral, and this will of course be with the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. India sees the economic cooperation between the two countries as an important pillar of the strategic partnership. In order to woo potential investors for India, the Indian Prime Minister also met with about 30 CEOs and business leaders in Tokyo. The Indo-Japan tie has been growing stronger. They've always been strong, but they've become stronger of late. And the Indian Prime Minister has described India-Japan partnership as a clear necessity for peace and security in the Indo-Pacific. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of why this Quad Summit is, of course, very significant, we're joined in by Ambassador Gurjeet Singh. He's a former Indian diplomat to Japan and also to the ASEAN. Now, Ambassador Singh, this, this of course has been a crucial meeting at the Quad where the Indian Prime Minister has met with the President of the United States, the Prime Minister of Japan and Australia. What do you make of this visit and why do you think Quad is so significant for us at this point of time? The challenges for India and much of the world are in the Indo-Pacific. And therefore, the Quad meeting is always important to us. Secondly, the Americans in particular seem to be trying to paint Russia as the enemy number one, whereas for us it is clearly China which is enemy number one. Now the Australians and the Japanese may dovetail behind the Americans, but I think they have enough problems with China to keep it in focus. Therefore, the importance of this meeting is how to bring the focus clearly back on the indo pacific and on China. And I think there is enough Right, I think there's a bit of an issue with the line there. Ambassador will try to fix that issue with you in just a moment. But this, of course, is, is what's been happening since this morning where the four leaders sat face to face. They discussed several issues and also in their opening remarks stressed on the importance of how Quad can actually be an important forum to discuss and also to address several key issues that the Indo-Pacific faces. And I'm told that the line has been fixed. We'll try try again. Uh, Ambassador Singh, if you can hear me, you know, uh, we heard the remarks that were made by the four leaders earlier this morning. And, you know, I, I want you to weigh in on what the American president, of course, said. He spoke at length about the war that is unfolding in Ukraine. And just before he turned up for the Quad Summit, he also made a very interesting statement where he said that America will defend Taiwan militarily in case China decides to invade into it. Now, the question that I want to ask you is, you know, when America showed very little appetite to get into a direct confrontation with Russia in the Ukraine war, do you think the Americans have an appetite to get into a direct conflict with China to defend Ukraine? Oh. Am I audible to you? Yes, Ambassador, go ahead. Okay, so I think there are two distinct threads over here. <coughs> One is defending Taiwan. 
in which the Americans want to Mr. Singh, I'll have to interrupt you there because we're getting live visuals from Tokyo where the Indian Prime Minister has sat down for his bilateral meeting with the President Joe Biden. Let's listen to what's in fact being said. India supporting vaccine production, clean energy initiatives, and uh, I'm also glad we're renewing the Indo-US Vaccine Action Program. We also discussed the ongoing effects of Russia's uh, brutal and unjustified invasion of Ukraine and the effect it has on the entire global world order. And uh, the U.S. and India are going to continue consulting closely on how to mitigate these negative effects. और हम इसके ऊपर भी चर्चा करेंगे जो कि रशिया के क्रूर और अनुचित युद्ध के यूक्रेन के विरुद्ध जो उन्होंने किया है जिसका पूरे विश्व पर असर पड़ रहा है और इसमें हम बहुत बारीकी से निरंतर परामर्श करते रहेंगे भारत में और अमेरिका के मध्य और इसके ऊपर हम ये विचार करेंगे कि किस प्रकार इसके प्रभाव को हम कम कर सकते हैं Mr. Prime Minister, there's so much that our countries can and will do together, and I'm committed to uh, making U.S.-India partnership among the closest we have on Earth. Mr. President, आपसे मिलकर हमेशा बहुत खुशी होती है आज हमने एक और सकारात्मक और उपयोगी वार्ड समिट में भी साथ साथ भाग लिया Mr. President, it's always a pleasure to meet you and today we also participated together in a very positive and useful Quad Summit. Bharat and America's strategic partnership is a partnership of trust. The India-America strategic partnership is in the true sense a partnership of trust. Our Sajha Mulyam और सुरक्षा सहित कई क्षेत्रों में हमारे समान हितों ने इस ट्रस्ट के बॉन्ड को मजबूत किया है। Our common interests, our common interests in defence and other relation, uh, in defence and other matters, and our shared values have indeed strengthened this bond of trust between our two countries. हमारे पीपल टू पीपल रिलेशंस और घनिष्ठ आर्थिक संबंधों में भी हमारी पार्टनरशिप को यूनिक बनाते हैं। Our people to people relations and our strong economic cooperation makes our partnership even more unique। हमारे बीच ट्रेड और निवेश में भी निरंतर विस्तार होता जा रहा है। यद्यपि ये हमारे पोटेंशियल से अभी बहुत कम है। our trade and investment relations are also steadily on the rise, but they are still well below potential. मुझे विश्वास है कि हमारे बीच इंडिया यूएसए इन्वेस्टमेंट इंसेंटिव एग्रीमेंट से निवेश की दिशा में कंक्रीट प्रगति देखने को मिलेगी. I am absolutely confident. That with the conclusion of the India-USA investment incentive agreement, we will see concrete progress in investment between our two countries. हम टेक्नोलॉजी के क्षेत्र में अपना द्विपक्षीय सहयोग बढ़ा रहे हैं और वैश्विक मुद्दों पर भी आपसी समन्वय सुदृढ़ कर रहे हैं. 
We're also increasing bilateral cooperation in the domain of technology, and even on global issues, we cooperate closely. हम दोनों ही देश के इंडो पैसिफिक क्षेत्र के बारे में भी समान नजरिया रखते हैं और न सिर्फ द्विपक्षीय स्तर पर बल्कि अन्य लाइक माइंडेड देशों के साथ अपने साझा मूल्यों और साझा हितों को सुरक्षित रखने के लिए काम कर रहे हैं वी बोथ शेयर सिमिलर व्यूज ऑन द इंडो पैसिफिक एंड एट द बायोलैट्रल लेवल एज वेल एज विद लाइक माइंडेड कंट्रीज वी कंटिन्यू टू वर्क टू प्रोटेक्ट आर कॉमन कंसर्न क्वार और कल घोषित आईपीएफ इसके सक्रिय उदाहरण है आज हमारी चर्चा से इस पॉजिटिव मोमेंटम को और गति मिलेगी द क्वार एंड द आईपीएफ आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ दिस कोऑपरेशन एंड आई बिलीव दैट आर डिस्कशन टूडे विल गिव इवन फॉर द स्पीड टू दिस पॉजिटिव मोमेंटम मुझे विश्वास है कि भारत और अमेरिका की मित्रता वैश्विक शांति और स्थिरता प्लेनेट की सस्टेनेबिलिटी और मानव जाति के कल्याण के लिए एक फोर्स फॉर गुड बनी रहेगी आई एम एब्सोटली श्योर दैट द इंडिया यूएस फ्रेंडशिप विल कंटिन्यू टू बी अ फोर्स फॉर गुड फॉर ग्लोबल पीस एंड स्टेबिलिटी फॉर सस्टेनेबिलिटी ऑफ द प्लेनेट एंड फॉर ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट All right, so that, of course, was the bilateral meeting and also the statements that were comments that were made by the two leaders as they met with each other, reiterating the points. Uh, on which the two nations will of course work upon and and also this this is a crucial relationship in 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 shaping the future of the 21st century and a whole host of commonalities were reiterated both by both the Indian prime minister and the American president there uh and and the Indian prime minister stated that this this of course is a relationship that is driven by principles and also is a relationship that of course will go a long way in addressing the challenges of the 21st century we still have ambassador gurjeet singh with us who is a former indian diplomat to japan and also to asean uh, ambassador singh we just heard the comments both by the indian prime minister and also by the american president where they both reiterated the points of commonalities in the india us equation this of course is a strategic partnership where both the nations there may be differences there are differences clear differences in terms of how india and the united states of course view this war that russia has waged in ukraine but still there are many points of commonalities on which the two leaders have reiterated the two nations will of course work towards certainly so what you have heard now is the opening statements from both sides at which time the media is present Mm-hmm. After this, they will move into the confidential discussions. Now, the opening statements are what we call the lowest common denominators. Everything which unites us is spoken of there, and that is why you heard the statement which said, "Well, we all do something for the common good." I think when they will now meet confidentially, that is where the United States will raise the issues of uh, Ukraine, Taiwan. Wheat exports, all the things that they want India to line up behind them. Now, India, by agreeing to join the IPEF, has evaded one of those pressure points. But on other issues, our position is clear. But the Americans are unrelenting, and they want us to come behind them, which we don't find it easy to do. And now, when is their attention is entirely on? bashing russia or you know defending taiwan uh, india doesn't have a direct role in those things we want china to be contained in the indo pacific and our attention should not be taken off that and i think that is where 
the contentious issue will come back. I think that's, that's an important point that you've made. Uh, also, Ambassador Singh, I, I want you to weigh in on that very interesting statement, you know, that was made by President Joe Biden before the Quad Summit, where he said that the United States will militarily defend Taiwan in the event that China decides to invade Taiwan. But looking at the manner in which the United States has dealt with this war in Ukraine, where it did not want to get into a direct confrontation with Russia, do you think the United States actually has an appetite to get into a direct confrontation with China on the issue of Taiwan? I do not think that was a serious statement. I think it was an off-the-cuff statement without backing from mm -hmm. the bureaucracy behind it. And I think it just kind of, you know, he said it in passing in some context, possibly to entice Japan. You know, the Americans are nudging Japan to do much, much more on defense with the American, you know, common command and control, increase your defense spending to 2% of GDP much faster, use the Indo-Japan treaty to take on China in Taiwan if necessary. And he also spoke to Korea about it. So uh, I don't think the Americans are itching for a war. I think it was a misstep. And right. this sometimes these things happen. We will not take it too seriously. All right. Uh, interesting. Now, also, Ambassador, uh, a lot of people are talking about, you know, about how the Quad has been going about in, in, in addressing the challenges that are that the world is, is being confronted with. Now, Quad is not a military alliance. Quad is essentially a forum and a gathering of four democracies. But at this point of time, the biggest pressing concern, of course, is the war that is unfolding in Ukraine. And Russia has managed to get Ch China firmly on its side. Now, if the West wants to succeed in isolating Russia completely, that it needs to actually lean in on China. And do you think Quad can actually help them? I don't think Quad can help them. I don't think India and even Australia for that matter. Australia has imposed sanctions, but I think Australia's main concern is with sanctions with China. And right. uh, I think they are just doing it to you know, as an ally partner of the uh, United States. Uh, I don't think the Quad or the Indo-Pacific has uh, any uh, role vis-a-vis -vis the Ukraine crisis. But, you know, I think you need to set aside this security dimension. In the last two summits, the Quad has consciously removed all these defense nomenclatures and actually shown itself to be a functional cooperative body. This was done to who ASEAN. ASEAN does not want to choose security partners between the US and China, but is happy to associate on economic and other issues. The success of that can be seen when the IPEF was launched, when uh, seven out of the 10 ASEAN countries have actually signed up to start consulting. So that shows that if you leave the defense part out and don't try and involve the region, mm -hmm. you will be able to get better acceptability. You need to do the defense part with your alliance partners, which are Australia, Japan and Korea. And that is where you need to focus your attention. You know, that's, that's an interesting point that you've made that Quad has, has tried to underplay, you know, any kind of defense aspects, if at all they had even been suggested at the time that, that it was resuscitated. Uh, but you raised this point of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, Ambassador, and, and the question that a lot of people are asking is, you know, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework is not guided by any treaties. There are no agreements that actually will bind the kind of tariffs that each country needs to impose on the other. This is again a loose uh, sort of a framework that is based on mutual understanding between the nations that will be a part of the Indo-Pacific economic framework. With that being the case, do you think this framework can even succeed? You know, in diplomacy, you often play a hand which could be a dummy hand. Now, this could be one of those. You see, the Americans are not in RCEP, they are not in TPP, they are only in APEC. So, if you want to be serious about the Indo-Pacific, you need to be economically engaged. Now, the Americans have come up with this rather uh, poor IPEF in which they are trying to engage everybody. And when they consulted the Japanese, the Japanese said, don't push people to sign negotiations straight away. Just announce it as a consulting framework. And that seems to have worked. There's so many 13 countries. That... So, you know, out of the RCEP, Except for China and India and Cambodia, Laos and Myanmar, all the other countries are into 
this IPEF and you add India and the US. <clears throat> so it's not a bad deal. What it will lead to, I don't know, because the Biden administration will not have the political capital to run through a trade agreement through Congress. So therefore, all they can offer you are this kind of subs, which are good intentions rather than, you know, leading to trade concessions. And that is where the ASEAN countries in particular told them during the US ASEAN summit in mid-May that unless you give us access Right. Markets. Where is our concern with you? Absolutely, indeed. Those, those, of course, are issues which will have to be dealt with. Thank you very much, indeed, Ambassador Gurjeet Singh, for joining us and getting us all those insights. So, a very important summit meeting uh, has been held today. Of course, the bilaterals are presently underway. We'll, of course, track all the developments that are happening. And this, this member is our coverage from Tokyo, where we are getting our viewers everything that is unfolding there. So the Indian Prime Minister has sat down for his bilateral meeting with the American President Joe Biden. And as the day progresses, he'll also be having a bilateral meeting with the Australian Prime Minister and with the Japanese Prime Minister as well. We'll slip into a short break. More news, news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned to Vyond. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.